Hi everybody. In today's video I'm going to show you a new program I've written called datajuggler.accelerate. If you're a C-sharp programmer and you ever work with Excel, you'll probably find this program useful. Accelerate does two things. First, it will help you load all the data in a worksheet or worksheets simpler. And the second thing it does, it will code generate C-sharp classes from your header row. So I'm going to give you a quick, blimp, a quick glimpse of my client's uh, Excel file. So I'm going to put this little cover up here so I don't give away anything I'm not allowed to show you. And here I just wanted to show you the column headers. And I do a little bit of cleanup, like there's some hyphens between the, the names or if there's any spaces. Or here like rate percent is turned into a property name of rate percent. But other than that, uh, this hasn't been tested a whole lot. So I'm sure this will have to evolve as more spreadsheets get tested with it. But my first test worked pretty well since I wrote this um, all yesterday. So I got tired of doing this by hand every time I did a new project for one of my clients. So we're going to go ahead and get started and show you a quick demo. I just wanted to show you what we were doing. So go ahead and minimize that. And now I'm going to bring up my, I have a little sample project here. And you see the objects folder is empty. This is actually the project I'm going to use for my client, but the objects folder here is empty. And then this is the sample project that comes, it's in the GitHub repo, for what I just showed you, uh, just data juggler or github.com slash data juggler slash accelerate there. Sorry, I'm trying to do that from memory. Okay, and now this is a really simple form, but I'll just go ahead and run it and rather than me just talk. Let me kind of minimize everything, be a little easier. Okay, so first you, accept, you select your Excel sheet. I'm going to select one I've got here in my temp folder because it doesn't give away as much uh, information. Okay, and then here you select the, whichever uh, worksheet you want. By default, it selects your first worksheet. And then I'm going to select my output folder, which is that stats program I just showed you. And I want the objects. I'm going to select this folder. And first you must load the worksheet and that just that will enable the code generate button and now I'm just going to click the code generate button so not a whole lot to it so far but we'll go ahead and uh, minimize all this I'm trying to keep all the code in the accelerate project sorry I didn't mean to do that but let's go over to the stats program and I'll show you what I just uh, built so this is the class that was just code generated Here's all the private variables. You know, I know most people use the prop, you know, and just do the get and setter, but I kind of like having a private variable underneath, so if I ever needed to bug it. And here's all the field names that were in my spreadsheet, and here's the properties. And notice the properties are sorted in alphabetical order. Not that they have to be, but still it's kind of, you know, the code's always up here, but to me it's nice to have the code sorted in alphabetical order. If you don't like regions, I can make it an option for no regions, but for now I use regions for a lot of things, so that's why there's I'm a regionaholic. Okay, now I'll just go ahead and show you this does compile after we built it. So all that does, you know, that loads the basically just takes the header row and I do I wrote some code to attempt to determine the data type. It's probably and I've looked for code of how to find the actual data type of the column and it didn't seem to work but my my little hack worked for my needs so far I'm sure there's going to be lots of field names that'll get the data type wrong but it'll still save you some time you can come in here and you know rename the data type in a few seconds so I'll go ahead and close this and I'll go ahead and give you a quick tour of some of the things this program does and what I plan on doing. I'll close down my client's project for now and I'll come over here. Okay, so basically everything happens here in this class called Excel Data Loader. I created a few overrides here. Basically you can either just load a worksheet or you can load the workbook. For now you can pass in a list of sheets to load if you want to load more than one, but for every worksheet you must have a class that's called the load worksheet info. Let me find that. Yeah. It's just a simple class, but it has some properties for the sheet name, uh, the, the max rows. If you don't want to load all the data, you can set a maximum when you're loading. You can also set 
like I mentioned, the, the load column options, which is just an enumeration that's right somewhere. Oh, uh, where it is? Here it is, right here. Okay, so if you can either load, as I mentioned, you can load all the columns, <clears throat> or except for the excluded ones, or you can load the first X columns, or you can load your own list of specified columns. And if you want a specified columns, all you do is it's just a really simple uh, name. Sorry. So it's just the column name. Really all you need to do is pass in the column name. These properties here are used internally. So just if you want to pass in your own name, just pass in a list of one or more sheets you want. If you don't want to load, or if you want to load more than one sheet at a time. And eventually I'll do things to like just give you a path and let's load all the sheets. But that's version 2. This thing is uh, brand new. And there's not a whole lot else to this. Um, basically, I, the code generator here class, this uses the same C Sharp class writer that I use for datatier.net, which is what I use to code generate uh, you know, the data tier and all the classes for for you know, SQL Server projects, but the same, it was really simple to create the code generation for this because I had all the code already written, so all I had to use was my class called a data field, and I'll show you where I do that. Let me go to my uh, data field. There we go. Yeah. So for each column, I, I go through and uh, select, this is whatever row you're using as your header row. So and I go through and just uh, create a data field, which is just like when I read the database schema. So we're just kind of faking out the system and I'm just getting the field name. And here I just capitalized the first character. So the field name, because some of the cell spreadsheets don't have things, you know, in case they're not formatted correctly. And here I just set the field ordinal. It's really not needed so much for uh, data tier.net since we're not going to SQL Server but it's used here for what column index so if I need to retrieve this column and here is just where I attempt to determine the data type I even called it attempt because it's it's just that you know I did a little bit of if your column like one of my columns had all zeros so it's a little harder to to set but I if I find a uh, a decimal I go ahead and just assume it's probably meant to be a, a double which I call it a decimal in this as far as the column is concerned all right it's a you know this video wasn't meant to show you anything magical it's more the go get the code if you want to look at it because it's I think it's pretty useful as far as the time-saving feature you know just if you ever need to load a worksheet I've written so many classes where I I do this by hand and I just got tired of doing it one you know manually so I decided to clicking buttons is so much easier plus it's not just faster it's more accurate because when you copy and paste stuff you always make mistakes all right well have a great day I've got to do some real work and make some money but I just wanted to show you my new project that's on github all right have a great day